Hello, my name is John, and this is the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I read this week. This episode is going to be a lot shorter than last week because of less books and less things to say about them. Let's begin with Green Arrow number 11, written by Benjamin Percy and art by Juan Ferreira. Despite how cool this underwater train is, this issue demonstrates how impractical such a structure would be. Cool is also the word I would use to describe this entire issue. It's heavy on the action and the suspense, but there's not all that much there in terms of character development and themes. The action is really good though, and the art is really nice. What's most striking about this issue though is probably the most controversial. It seems that the creative team had another presidential winner in mind when this was produced. So there's a cameo appearance here that's probably not working as intended. Justice League number 9, written by Brian Hitch and art by Neil Edwards. I don't know about this one. My suspension of disbelief is challenged. I don't care how good of a hacker you are, no regular human should be able to just hack into a Green Lantern ring, or a mother box for that matter. The rest of this it's not awful, but I have a hard time finding things about this to hold on to. I mean, sure, there's a theme of grief and what that can motivate you to do, but it's really superficial. Hey, this story's not over, and it's possible my issues will be addressed, but I doubt it. I'm really not trusting this. Raven number 3, written by Marv Wolfman and art by Alison Borges. About previous issues, I've said that I had no idea what's going on. And that is still the case here. And that is despite the fact that the narration is trying to tell me what is going on. Between dramatic scene shifts, art that is sometimes hard to read what is going on, and a memory loss that is in power for two pages, this is a bit of a mess. Still, the story keeps building and my confusion should not be mistaken for boredom. It could be as simple as me finding the protagonist in this sympathetic, and I want to see what happens to her. But I'm going to keep reading. Batman number 11, written by Tom King and art by Michael Janine. Fanboy me is screaming internally. Just no. Even if the event in this is part of a bigger ruse, which I'm really expecting, and my fanboy rage can be silenced, this just isn't very well done. There's a two page spread in this that is impossible to read in the right order, because it's not really obvious how to read it. There is no logical progression of the action and the speech bubbles. Tom King, you're better than this. Come on. Superman number 11 by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. This is just really corny. This issue and the previous one are more like a cartoon than this book has been. One could argue that it is appropriate, since the main characters in this are kids, but it's not really working for me. It might have something to do with how obvious this story was, but it might also be me not really buying that this Superman would be part of this kind of parenting. It's like it's the 1960s Superman all of a sudden, whose main purpose in life was seemingly to teach his friends harsh lessons and silly pranks. I also don't really buy this self-aggrandizing attitude from both Batman and Superman. It's just really off. Trinity number 3, written by Francis Manapul and art by Clay Mann. Despite Manapul only writing this, the art is still very good. There are many questions about this. Last issue it was revealed that what Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman are experiencing is not time travel, but in fact the effects of the Black Mercy plant from the classic Superman story for the man who has everything. Why this is happening is another story. We know that somehow Poison Ivy is involved, but why would she attack a random farm? Does this mean that she knows Batman and Superman's secret identities? Is this just a mission from somebody else? Mongol, perhaps? What is also relevant is what the point of the events in the Black Mercy induced dream is. A lot of the things that are happening in it is not experienced by any of the real people, only the manifestations inhabiting this dream world, and none of the main characters are there to see it. Also, the effects of the plant seem somewhat different from how they've been portrayed before. Usually it creates an ideal world for the victim, but that's not the case here. Like I said, many questions. So that was what I read this week. Did you enjoy this video? Please like, comment, subscribe and share this video. If you didn't like it or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments. I am done for this week.